All right. Welcome, everyone, to today's Webmaster Central Office Hours Hangout. My name is John Mueller. I am a Webmaster Trends Analyst at Google in Switzerland. And part of what we do are these Office Hour Hangouts, where people can jump in and ask any question around their website and web search. A bunch of things were submitted already. Um, but maybe we can get started with, with some of you all, if there's anything from your side that you'd like to add. Could we start with some indexing? Uh, it seems like a lot of people are complaining about indexing, indexing issues for the past couple weeks or months. This is a new thing where Google's like, you know what? We're not going to go ahead and index as many pages as we used to because we're going to look at quality and say, all right, if the site's not a certain quality threshold, we're not going to index as many pages. Is there anything new with that? I, I don't think there's anything really new in, in that regard. But what, what has kind of changed over, I guess, maybe the last half year or even longer is that we show this information a little bit more visibly in Search Console. So it's not so much that it's like we, we're changing how we do indexing, how we select the pages that we use for indexing or crawling. It's more that in Search Console, we'll tell you, well, we've seen these URLs, but we decided not to index them. And then people take that information. They're like, oh. I, I must be doing something wrong. Therefore, I need to fix something. Or like maybe Google is broken or something like that uh, because it's, it's flagging me all of these pages. But it's something that I think, at least as far as I know, has been the case at Google since the beginning in that we, we just can't index the whole web. There are so many things happening across the whole web that we, we can't possibly keep up with everything all the time. So we, we have to make decisions along the way and figure out which pages we, we really need to have crawled and indexed, and maybe which pages. It's like, well, it's interesting that you wrote this, but at the moment, we, we don't really know what we should do with this information. So maybe we should just not index it at the moment. Yeah. And I, I think that's. It's kind of tricky because on the one hand, when when I talk to Search Console, the Search Console folks, we, we tell them that this confuses people and they feel they need to fix something because we're flagging it as something not being indexed. But at the same time, it's also the kind of information we want to give people, where we we essentially want to tell them, hey, we we noticed you put this stuff out, but we decided not to index it. We we don't really have a kind of a, a human readable reason for why we decided not to index it. But we, we still want to give people the information that we, we understand your site is this big, but we're just picking up a small part for indexing at the moment. OK, so just to be clear, it's a reporting thing possibly that has changed in the past several months, but not anything new with how Google determines what to index in the, or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's something that, that happens with crawling all the time, uh, essentially. You, you see it as an SEO. If you're looking at your server logs, you notice it there probably first, where you realize you put out 100,000 pages, and Google is crawling 20,000 of them. And essentially, we, we might know about these 100,000 pages because they're in the sitemap file, but we're just crawling a small part of them. So therefore, we can only really index that small part of your site. And as you kind of improve improve the quality of your website, as you improve things around your website, maybe improve some technical details, then that number of the URLs that we crawl, that tends to go up. And that's from from my point of view, that's been the case since I don't know, since the beginning. I think in, in Gary's crawl budget blog post, he also touched upon this kind of the the crawl demand, how much we want to crawl from your website. And that that also changes over time. And if we don't want to crawl a lot of stuff from your website, then essentially we're not going to be able to index all of that. Thank you. OK. John, I have a question about the core web vitals sure. and some of the tools you guys have with them. Uh, so I, I, uh, I'm looking at some of the sites, and I'm looking at um, the PageSpeed Insights tool, I'm looking at Search Console, and then I'm also using the extension in the browser. And I find that Search Console and PageSpeed Insights seem to line up pretty well, but the extension uh, seems to be way off, uh, or at least different. Um, is that because the extension is using my network 
and the other tools are using a, yeah, a combination of things. And then I guess if that's the case, which would be the source of truth for like ranking at the end of the day? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know offhand how the extension works, but my understanding it is it does use kind of your your current uh, data that that is kind of like what you're seeing in your browser. And uh, with regards to a lot of these speed metrics, we, we kind of differentiate between uh, lab data and data that we collect from users uh, through the Chrome user experience report. Um, I think it's like real user metrics or some 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 word that they use for that. And uh, essentially, what we see is that for, for all, all kinds of data like this, it's more of a prediction of what we expect to see when a new user comes to your site. And that's kind of based on what we've seen in the past, what we would see if we tested it kind of uh, in, in more of a lab environment, which could be kind of like on your computer. It could be something. Uh, maybe it's running on, on a server at uh, webpagetest.org if you use their tests, for example. And essentially, all of these tools are kind of approximations of what, what the average user might see. Um, I, I recommend using kind of the, the lab data in situations where you're testing things, where you're trying things out, uh, because that's where you see essentially the immediate effect. Like you change something on your website, you run the test again in your browser, you see a new score. And over time, if that's something that you publish on, on your website, if other people can see it as well, then that will affect kind of the, uh, the field data as well over time. Uh, I don't know what, what the time frame is with regards to the Chrome user experience report. I, I'm just throwing a number out there. I'm guessing maybe it's aggregated over a month or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something where over the course of this period of time, that data needs to be collected, and then you'll see the, the changes that you see kind of on your side. And sometimes the, the lab tests don't align completely with what users would see. Uh, like if you have the server right next to you, and it's like, obviously, the, your network connection is going to be perfect. Um, but the average user has to go through the internet, and maybe your server is in some faraway place for the average user. So, their network connection will always be slow. Um, so that's something just kind of worth keeping in mind. With regards to what we would use for search, uh, we would essentially align it with the data that we show in Search Console, which is kind of based on the, the field data that people actually see. OK, good. So the field data in Search Console. So Search Console uses the source of truth for ranking, and Search Console is closely related to field data uh, that you use. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, just one one brief note. I need to drop out maybe 10, 12 minutes early to join something else afterwards. Um, but I'll run through some of the questions that were submitted. And if you all have any questions along the way, feel free to jump in. Um, I'll see if I can get through them a little bit faster than usual. Maybe we can go through. Um, for an e-commerce site, we want to implement a login area. Uh, so either use a new page or embed the login with an iframe. What option should you use? Do I need to block it in robots text? Um, essentially, search doesn't care. You can do whatever you want there. Uh, blocking it in robots text is also fine. Uh, essentially, if someone would be searching for your site, close login, they might come to this roboted uh, page in the search results. But essentially, that would lead to your site anyway. So that's perfectly fine. Uh, then there's a question about discovered, currently not indexed. I think we talked about that briefly already. Um, review websites could have many low quality pages, thin content, poor site structure. Most reviews won't rank or even get indexed, which isn't a problem. But could this hurt other high quality pages on the same site? Uh, should we use rel UGC to tag kind of the on-page content like this? Uh, so in general, you don't need to flag user-generated content. But if you're publishing user-generated content on your site, that's essentially what we think your site is publishing. Uh, so just because it originated from some user, if that's what you publish on your website, we think that's the content that you'd like to have shown, which is kind of the, the, the case. 
so if you think this user-generated content is low quality or even bad content, then it's kind of up to you with regards to whether or not you want to publish it. Uh, so that's something where I generally recommend trying to evaluate the quality of the user-generated content on your website and making sure that what you publish aligns with what you want to have your site known for. Um, question about, I guess, HTML. The lead paragraph of our articles is inside a div. P is more correct. Uh, if we're speaking about HTML5, what about Googlebot? Uh, does it care about div or Ps? We, we essentially don't care. Uh, totally up to you. I don't know what the kind of semantically perfect variation would be in this case. Uh, but for from Google's side, for indexing, we treat them the same. Uh, we have a news website, 200 articles every day. There are two options. All links, on the at, uh, all links for all the time are stored in a sitemap, hundreds of thousands of links. Uh, or only the 1,000 last links are stored in a sitemap. So any benefit to using a second variant versus the first? Uh, so essentially, these are these kind of map directly to new sitemaps and general sitemaps that we have. With general sitemaps, we recommend including all of your pages in the sitemap file. Uh, with new sitemaps, it's limited, I think, to the last 1,000 pages. Uh, new sitemaps are specifically meant for Google News, but you can use new sitemaps for essentially any kind of website if you want. Or you can alternately just create an, an extra sitemap with just 1,000 links in it and submit that individually. Uh, so I think both of these options are fine. In general, I do recommend including all of your URLs in a sitemap file somewhere just so that you have full coverage in Search Console in the reporting. Uh, for websites that rely heavily on UGC to create millions of pages of Q&A, like Quora, what's the best way to structure them so that the crawl budget is used efficiently without having to remove pages? Uh, I think there is essentially no difference with regards to where your content comes from when it comes to crawl budget or kind of the internal crawling and indexing of a website. Uh, Essentially, you want to create a, a structure of a website where it's easy for us to crawl and find your most important pages as quickly as possible, and where we can somehow reach all of the content on your website, at least all of the content that you want to have indexed. And that's independent of the source of the content, if that's something where you're writing all of these articles yourselves, if you have a team of writers creating content, if it's created by users, it essentially doesn't matter. Uh, I'm doing a 301 redirect from subdirectory on my site to a subdirectory on a new domain. Once they're redirected, uh, I will be displaying a pop-up to inform users that they have been redirected to this new page. Once they read it, they can click Continue to move on. Would that affect anything? Uh, so usually, the way to implement something like this would be to check the HTTP refer that you get when a user clicks on a link and goes to a new site. Uh, you can pass that referrer along. And that way, you can recognize on the new site that the user came from clicking a link on the old site, for example. Uh, for Google, when we crawl and index the web, we don't send the referrer at all. Even if we follow a redirect, even if we follow a link on a page somewhere, uh, we essentially don't, don't forward a f referrer at all. So we would never see this kind of extra pop up there. Uh, so in that regard, this would be essentially something that wouldn't affect search at all. Uh, can image quality on my content page affect the overall page quality rank? If yes, then what aspects of quality matter, the resolution, camera, sharpness, et cetera? Uh, so my understanding is that the quality of the images doesn't affect the ranking in normal web search, but it can affect how these images appear in Google Images. Uh, so specifically for Google Images, we do try to recognize high quality images. And we do try to show those appropriately in the search results in Google Images. Uh, so that's something where if you care about traffic from image search, if you see that your users are searching in kind of a visual way with uh, Google Images, then obviously you'd want to improve the quality of your images. I mean, that's kind of 
I'd say the logical conclusion anyway, if you want people to search visually and you want to present your site in a visual way, then you need to make sure that that presentation is as good as possible so that people click through to your site. Uh, with regards to just pure web search, that's not something that we would directly kind of care about. Indirectly, I don't know, maybe if users come to a page and they think this is really bad page because the images on the page are really bad, then maybe they won't recommend it. But that's more of an indirect effect and more something between you and your users. Um, why is it so that my website ranking keeps decreasing until last March, even, even though I didn't build any link for the past three years of my site? Uh, now when I built some links in April, the traffic went up only to crash by 80% in the May update. Why is that so? Uh, whether or not I build links, I get hit by the update. Uh, it's really hard to say without looking at your website. Uh, in general, um, I suspect the, the kind of link building that you're doing there doesn't really affect the, the way that Google shows your website in search. Uh, so probably what you're seeing in this case is kind of the natural changes in the algorithms over time. Um, but that said, I, I really don't know what exactly you've been doing with your website, what your, what your website is, uh, what, what it's about, what, what kind of links you've been building to the website there. It's, it's really hard to say. My, my general recommendation here would be to get more feedback from peers. And the best way to do that is maybe to go to either our Webmaster Help Forum or some other forum for webmasters and explicitly mention your site's URLs and the queries that you're looking at so that other people can take a look at your site and give you some tips on what you could be doing differently. Um, John, if you. Uh, if I could just jump in. Um, sure. So I had a follow up for my earlier bananas <laughs> question. Um, when you said uh, it's really more to when we're showing which pages are most important on our site, you said it's really more about our um, internal structure. Um, is is it more? Did you mean it's more about like um, the way we have internal links going on the site, um, placement of pages from the home page, let's say, um, or is it more about like a does, uh, the, this proportion of the co of the content that's about bananas versus about other topics does that also play a factor? Um, I, I think there there are multiple things that kind of play into that. The I, I guess where where usually I start is things around internal linking with regards to the the anchor text that you use internally, it, how you refer to your other pieces of content, and with regards to how. Uh, how visibly they're referred to. So for example, if you have a page about a specific topic and that's only linked way down in your site's architecture, then for us, we probably assume this page is not that critical. Uh, whereas if you have that same page linked with, with an important anchor text from your home page, uh, then generally, because we assume your home page is probably an important part of your website, then that's going to make that page much more important within the structure of your website. So that's kind of how you would structure your website a little bit to make it clear to us which parts of your website you think are particularly important. OK. And so if, even if we're writing um, a lot about like strawberries and oranges and stuff, um, it's that like the ratio of those of that content to the bananas content doesn't really play a factor. It's just more about the, the linking and the anchor text. Yeah, I mean, specifically okay. with regards to, to things internally within your website. I, th I think it's always yeah. tricky with regards to the amount of content that you have and how visible that content is within your website, uh, because it's very easy to, to be kind of in a situation where you create a lot of content, but within your website, you're positioning it in a way that it's more secondary. Uh, so just yeah. by absolute counts, you might have I don't know, a lot of terms and condition pages, but your website is not about kind of legal topics, but rather you're selling something specific. Uh, right, so just okay. the absolute number of pages on a specific topic that you have, that's kind of secondary to how, you fr how important you frame them within your website. OK, perfect. Thank you. Sure.
Um, let's see. Uh, I've been working really hard on a particular website with content and SEO on my website is now returning good position in search engine. Do I now stop altering the content and the SEO, or will I have to keep updating it as I may lose rankings, or do I just leave it as it is, uh, kind, kind of as it was built up now? I, yeah, I, I think, in general, there's always a temptation to kind of let things be once they work well. But uh, the web is evolving so quickly so that if you don't stay on top of things, it's very easy to kind of end up in a state where your website has been doing well for a number of years, but suddenly the rest of the world moves on, and your website becomes less relevant. And it's not so much that you've been doing something wrong for a number of years. It's just that things have evolved since then. Uh, so with that in mind, I would not just stop when you're in a good position, but kind of keep working at it and keep trying to optimize things, uh, try to recognize trends ahead of time uh, before other people kind of jump on them, and keep evolving your website to make sure that it remains relevant over time. And uh, that's sometimes easier said than done, but I think the hard work is kind of getting into that position first. So you're probably in a good spot to, to keep that momentum up. Um, after the May core update, the homepage of my website jumped to, from the seventh position to the first and stayed there up until you announced the new core web vitals. In a position of a few days afterwards, my website dropped to the fourth position. My homepage is poorly optimized for speed. And uh, top three websites uh, right now have worse content but better optimization. Uh, so I, get, I guess the question is, did I get penalized for core web vitals? Uh, so the short answer is no. Uh, we, we have not announced a date when we're going to start using the core web vitals as a ranking factor. Uh, so this is not yet in place. Uh, we decided to announce it early on, just so that like, these metrics are out there as early as possible, that people understand which direction we're headed. Uh, but we also said that we would I think give a heads up time of something like a half a year uh, before we would start using them in search as a ranking factor. Uh, so that's something where we announce these. But if you're seeing a change on the date of the announcement, uh, that would not be related to that announcement at all. That's something where maybe other ranking changes happen, maybe other things in kind of the web that you're active in have changed. So. Speed is still important. It's still something you should focus on, but it's probably not the reason why your website dropped. Uh, can you talk a bit about Discover? My page suddenly started getting traffic from the source, and just like that, it stopped again in a few months. Uh, I don't have anything really specific to, to add about Discover. I think we have a Help Center page about Discover, which goes into a little bit of what what happens in Discover. Uh, but essentially, it's, it's something where you need to understand your audience well and create content that works well for your audience, that they really appreciate, that makes sense for us to show kind of in this proactive stream where they get content that might be interesting to them. Um, I, as far as I know, there are no technical requirements that you need to be in a specific format uh, for being visible in Discover. There's no meta tags you need to use, other than, of course, making sure that you're not blocking, crawling, and indexing. Um, with regards to the previews in Discover, I believe if you're using AMP by default, you have the or you can have the bigger image preview. Uh, you can also use the meta tag to. Uh, select that you would like to have a bigger image preview as well. Uh, so there are various ways of getting in there, but there's no uh, kind of simple, simple trick to force your site into being visible there, which is kind of tricky because when it comes to search, you can understand what people are searching for and create content that matches those, those searches. With Discover, people are not searching. Uh, so there are no queries that we can show you where we can say, well, people are interested in this topic. You should create some content on this topic. Um, makes it a bit trickier sometimes. Um, I have a question for my domain. A large number, 
of more than nine years old, millions of events pages are still uh, getting crawled and indexed regularly, even though I've removed the sitemap and everything. And many upcoming events URLs fall into the category of discovered, currently not indexed, and this number is increasing. What should I do? Uh, so I think discovered, currently not indexed. We talked about that briefly in the beginning. Uh, with regards to sitemaps and crawling, sitemaps help us to crawl better, but they don't limit what we crawl. Uh, so just because. Just because pages are not in, in a sitemap file doesn't mean we would not crawl them or not index them. We would still crawl the website normally. Uh, hello, uh, Hi. John. I'm, yeah. I'm here. How are you? Cool. Good to have you here. So, uh, so I have a question. Uh, I uh, 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 raised this question. So my past year, uh, low quality pages are still indexing. Uh, uh, and my upcoming events uh, URLs are not indexing. So, so this might be uh, some Google issue or something else. Um, I I don't think there's any issue with regards to indexing at the moment. But, um, but, so. my, but, my, upcoming, but my upcoming events have uh, high quality uh, uh, pages, and uh, this uh, uh, past year uh, events are. Uh, uh, already uh, uh, low quality uh, pages. So why Google uh, continuously uh, uh, crawls these old pages since it's uh, uh, too many years ago? Yeah, my my guess is that these are just URLs that we have indexed at some time in the past, and uh, we we tend to keep URLs indexed for a fairly long time once we know about them. So. Probably we we just haven't gotten around to kind of re reshuffling things around here. Uh, there are things you could do if you wanted to control that more on your side. Uh, one thing is to use the no index meta tag on pages that you don't want to have index anymore. Uh, another thing that you can do is use the unavailable after uh, meta tag, which lets us know ahead of time when you think that a certain page will no longer be relevant. Uh, so yes. for example, like if you have events, you could say maybe a month after this event took place, uh, you will kind of use the unavailable after meta tag and tell us this only makes sense to keep indexed for until a month after the event has taken place. And then afterwards, we'd be able to drop that out a little bit quicker. I don't know okay. if, if removing pages from the index will make it so that we index newer pages faster on a website, though. So it's not the case that you have a limited number of pages in our index, and right. if we right, have right. the old ones, then we can't add new ones. But my question is, Google is still uh, crawling my uh, oldest page uh, uh, compared to my uh, new pages. So that's why I raised the question. Yeah. I, I think from a crawling point of view, we, we crawl a lot of things, but uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that we would still index them. Uh, so my, my general recommendation here would be to think about what you want to continue to have indexed and let us know about things that you don't want to have indexed if, if you want to make that decision. Uh, but otherwise, to really make sure that the quality of the website overall is as high as it could possibly be. Uh, I haven't taken a look at your website uh, specifically, so it's kind of hard to say. Uh, but uh, a lot of the pages that, that I've seen on Twitter that get flagged for kind of these issues where they fall into discovered, not indexed, or crawled, not indexed, um, it tends to be that the, the website overall is kind of in this murky area where we think, well, some, some parts are pretty good, some parts are kind of OK but not fantastic. And then at some point, we just say, well, we're going to wait to see that we get more signals for these particular new URLs before we spend time to actually index them. And uh, I have another question. Uh, if you have time, I can discuss. So sure. after implementing uh, online schema, uh, uh, we lost overall uh, ranking in uh, feature snippet, in event feature snippet. Um, so is there any advice?
that should be unrelated. So the the kind of the structured data that you supply on these pages, uh, when you when you additionally add additional structured data types, that wouldn't change the ranking of those pages. It would just be it would give us more information or different information about those pages, which could result in other rich results. But it wouldn't change the ranking of the page. So if you're seeing ranking changes, that would be no. independent. No, uh, no, no, not I'm. I'm not uh, talking about ranking. I'm talking about uh, we lost our uh, feature snippet uh, in a uh, event schema part, uh, event list, and uh, event. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, rich result. I mean. Yeah. Um, if if you could drop some sample URLs maybe in the chat here, I I can pick those up afterwards and double check with the team. Yeah, sure. So meanwhile, you can continue with uh, another uh, sure. webmasters. Yeah, thank you. Cool. All right. Sean, on the note of oh sorry, <laughs> on the on on the note of the um, crawling uh, or discovered not indexed. Um, Sometimes I get AMP pages in there, and they appear. They're, they're freshly published, and they do. Uh, when I check them after, they get indexed, uh, or they have been indexed. So, um, is it just kind of a fluke um, if I ever see AMP pages in the crawled or discovered not indexed reports? Yeah, usually what would happen there is we we might discover and try to index those pages first because maybe we find a link to them, or for whatever reason we we find them fairly early. And once we've processed the AMP page and we've processed kind of the canonical HTML page that belongs to it, then we can connect the two and say, oh, we just need to focus on the HTML page. So as a first step, if we see the AMP page first, we'll be like, oh, it's, it's a page. We'll index it. And then as a second step, we'll see, oh, it actually belongs to this other page, which we crawled in the meantime as well. So we can kind of fold things together. OK. It's interesting that you might be able to see the AMP page first, though, because it's always connected to my canonical. Yeah. I mean, it it can happen that people link to these pages. I, I see that okay. every now and then, that people will take the AMP URL they find in their browser, and they link to that directly. And in cases like that, we, we might pick that up um, a little bit faster than the HTML page. My guess is these would kind of just clean themselves out over time. It's more it's like, well, kind of a disconnect with the, the timeline of crawling, where usually we pick up the HTML page first and then understand the AMP connection. This time, we picked up the AMP page first and then shifted over to the HTML version. OK, I see. Thank you. Uh, is it possible I ask a question about page experience? Or you sure. guess? Go for All it. Right. So could you open up your, your crystal ball and say, it seems like the HTTPS, the page speed are all relatively historically minor signals when it comes to ranking. Um, the weights are just minor in general, especially because you let Gary program them and you don't really trust him too much. And I'm a joke. Um, any event, this page experience obviously lumps a bunch of those elements into this overall um, thing. And each one will be individually, from what I've spoken to the Google, each one will be an individual factor. It's just branding purposes calling them page experience. So the core vitals and all this other stuff, I suspect also will be relatively minor. Could you tell us if you think that would be true or not? I know obviously nothing's been programmed yet, but I don't know. I, my my feeling is it depends a lot on uh, the the search results pages uh, where where these pages are shown. So in situations where it's very clear that there's one relevant answer, then we're not going to just pick one that's a little bit faster. So if someone is searching for a SEO roundtable then it's like we're not going to show some random blog that talks about the site just because it's a little bit faster. We really, really know that people are looking for this site. Uh, on the other hand, if someone is searching for maybe something more generic like SEO news, and we have a bunch of different sites, and they're all kind of in a similar level, then that's something where we can take a lot more of these factors into play and say, well, actually, this is like kind of relevant, and it's a really good result. Therefore, maybe we should show it a little bit higher. And finding that balance is, is really hard. Uh, that's something where the ranking team, they spend a lot of time on this, and they, they do a bunch of tests on this uh, to try to figure out what, what is the right balance between 
all of the different ranking factors in all of these different kinds of situations. Uh, so it's, it's really not possible to say how strong of a signal it will be, because it, it really depends on, on the circumstances. And at the same time, it's not going to be something where we say, well, speed has to kind of uh, dominate everything else, uh, because we, we really need to also make sure that we're providing relevant results to people. Okay, and if I could add one um, new factor in the suggestion pool for those overall page experience, the, the no date for a news site. If the news site doesn't have anything date, as it doesn't have a date on an article, could you please add that as one of the just type okay. that down? And put okay. 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 Fine. I I hate that as well. That's a good point. Can I jump in? Sure. Um, we are making a new page format for a news website in which stories uh, will be told by cards. For example, on the page uh, there are nine cards for each question. After clicking on the card, it flips over. On the other side of the card, uh, there is an answer. Uh, it detects about uh, three or five hundreds of characters. Uh, we know that uh, Googlebot does not click, which means that uh, there may be problems with how Google will understand such articles. Uh, but at the same time, Martin Split. Uh, repeatedly said that if such content uh, is in the down tree, then the Google bot will see it and use. Um, so can you give us advice on how to correctly implement uh, a new format with cards from a technical point of view so that uh, they will be fully indexed? And uh, a link uh, with an example quote, if necessary, I will throw in the chat now. Yeah. So if, if the answer is in the HTML, uh, then essentially that will just work. Uh, on the other hand, if the answer has to be loaded from the server as soon as someone clicks on that card, then probably we would miss that. So that's that's kind of the the different approach there. Um, so that's something where one way you can do it is load the page and then look at the the render DOM that you have in your browser with the inspect element. And uh, if the answer is already in there, then you're, you're already covered. On the other hand, if the answer is not in there, that you need to do an interaction first before it's loaded in, into the, the visible page, then that's something we wouldn't see. OK, thank you. OK, um, I need to take a break here. Uh, sorry for cutting things short. Uh, I'll have a bit more time on Friday uh, in, in case any of you want to join in then. Um, thank you all for joining. And uh, thanks for all of the questions that were submitted. And hope to see you all soon, one of the next times. Can I just thank you, John, for, for just thank a minute you, John. here? Thank you. Or, or I, I, mean, I think you need to go. Uh, you need to go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Maybe ping me on Twitter. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye bye. All right. See you. Thank <laughs> you.